and I'm gonna just be honest with you. I believe why you think black women didn't get the roles in Hollywood because they would have told. Mm. Black women are strong and they wasn't gonna let no white man tell them you gotta have sex with me for this role. They would have told. So, but the successful black woman that did do it, I believe shut up and did what they had to do to get in that position. I believe Halle Berry let some white man touch her to get those roles and didn't say nothing about it. Because again, for capital gain, some people would take the lesser of the evil. That's, mm. what I, that's just what I believe. Because now there's a story out saying Halle Berry and Taraji P. Henson's manager, former manager, touched nine black girls, no, eight black girls and one Asian girl, but he was using the fact that he was their manager to touch them, but they never got no roles. So now they got a class action suit against him. But if you go back to what I was saying, look at the two women that he represented, the two biggest black stars today in, in Hollywood. And they're not claiming nobody touched them. So what made them different? Wow. Wow. Huh. These are things you got to look at with, 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 with an open mind. Because at the end of the day, nothing is given. Like behind every successful black man is a Jewish man behind him. <laughs> Believe that. What do you mean? Behind every successful black man, there's a <laughs> Jewish man, right? But in, in secrecy behind all of that, pulling the strings. You, you Google every successful black man. I guarantee you is a Jewish person on his team, financed something, or did something. I guarantee you. Jewish people is about business. They don't care about the color. They, they know how to monopolize off of people's uh, 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 talents. Is there a way to beat that? Is there a way to get around that and still... Yeah. Like what me and you always talk about, the black economical infrastructure. We have to build our own. You did if if you go on YouTube and you look up the the, the white racist NBA owner that got kicked out, mm -hmm. he said he said when Jews is messed up, we have an organization to help them out. We put we pool our money together and if he need a barbershop, we'll get him a barbershop. If he need this, we'll get him that. If if she's into real estate, we'll get her a real estate office. He said black people don't do that. So now the black people that does get in power is a Jew that took his time out and said, I right, I see your potential. I'm gonna put something into you. Clive Davis behind Puff Daddy. Uh 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 uh. What's the guy named from Def Jam that gave Jay-Z and them their money? Leo. Leo Cohen. You, 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 you just name them all. The, 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 the white dudes that own the NF, NBA, they gave all these black people they contract. Those are Jews. If you, if you don't have a Jew friend, you're not, you, 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 you're not winning. You need, I, I tell all my people that, get you a Jew friend. <laughs> the Jew, behind my success was a Jew. <laughs> yes, a Jewish person got me all my money. <laughs> it's the truth. And I love him. He's like a father figure to me. But the point I'm trying to say is, it's the truth. Behind every successful black man, there's a Jewish person in the wind. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Do the research. I guarantee you. That's really Go Google who's 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 the executive producers for the Russell, I mean for the Oprah Winfrey show. Who who cut her, her checks? Google that. I guarantee you it's a Jewish person. Her manager, who started her. That's you know? That's really powerful. All right, I, I want we gotta switch gears uh, this last time. Okay, we can switch gears forever. I could talk about everything. 
I want to talk about this. Uh, I know you're on this uh, healthier lifestyle. Yes. I want to know about this. Like I, I, I'm, I'm on my healthy thing too. Um, but I know you are very conscious of your health right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. I so, wasn't always that way. <laughs> right. I want to know like what, what, what triggered this? Yeah. First off. Yeah. What triggered this? Well, to be honest with you, a couple of my friends have passed away from cancer and they was very young. And then I also watched that Netflix show that was called With the Health. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's this guy named Ice Pick J. He's a, a big producer in the hip hop um, community. Like, he was like with the Rough Riders or DMX and Jada Kiss and uh, a bunch of those artists. But me and him was like childhood friends. And he passed away young, but he was really on his health stuff too. So that kind of opened my eyes when I seen him in the casket and I just made a conscious decision to myself, like I'm going to take better care of myself. Mm. So it was like um, to see your friend that's only two years older than you die from cancer and we're fairly young. So I was like, you know what? start doing the research and you know it's like these processed foods and all that stuff is just not good for us so i just made a conscious decision to, to to eat healthier so what are you doing like well first and foremost i know you're married and have uh kids as well so before my next question is how did are they included in this well, me and my wife actually does it, and my daughters. Oh, so y'all guinea pigging? You and the wife is y'all guinea pigging, trying it out first? Yeah, we 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 on our third month. Okay. And, and I didn't backslide or nothing. I'm doing good. I lost about twenty pounds. Mm. My wife lost some weight. I feel good. Uh, you know, it, I, I I I I could feel the difference. Okay. But as far as like my children. I'm not going to impose nothing on them yet. I'm trying to ease ease them into it. But as of right now, I want them to see the results for me and their mother. Do they see it? Like, have they noticed the 20 pounds? Have they noticed you feel good? Yeah, yeah, they noticed it. But, you know, those are children. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't, I don't impose my will on them. I let them try to learn how to make their own decisions. Could you, 20 years ago, 30 mm -hmm. years ago, do you see you thinking about food and what choices you make health-wise 20, 30 years ago? No. 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 That's what I'm saying. Like, I, the, Was you just the eat whatever type? Like you didn't have any discipline? You just whatever you eat back in the day? No, I never ate pork in my life. You, oh, you missed out. No, I didn't miss out. I used to eat pork all the time back in I my didn't day. Miss out. Pork is bad for you. I don't, I don't, I don't, I grew up in a Muslim household. That's number one. So, ah, okay. Yeah, but I've never ate pork. I'm, I, I won't say I've ate in bad. It's just that I've learned now that the stuff that I was eating is just not that good for you. So give us an example. Like, what's an example of some things that you were eating? That McDonald's, were mm. you know, processed foods, uh, Foods that's like, uh, how can I say it, with a lot of fat and a lot of stuff that can grow inside of you and block your arteries. You know, a lot of butter. You know, I even learned that you can't eat too much fish because it's high in uh, uh, mercury. So, you know, stuff like that that I just was oblivious to. So when I, you just said butter, are you using less butter or are you not using butter at all these past days? I don't, I don't eat butter. I eat margarine now. I don't eat butter at all. Wow. Yeah. But I, like I said, I, it's, it's not easy. I would never tell anyone it's easy, but you have to have, like, I, like what we was talking about earlier, you have to have the mindset. You have to have a conscious mind to say, I'm not going to do it no more. And this is what I want to do. And once you have that type of mindset, you actually can do anything. But it's you can like, cook though, right? Say that again. You can cook already. You already yes. know how to cook. Yeah. Yes. I cook, but that's the thing right now. I'm actually learning how to cook vegan food, vegetarian food. I'm not a vegan. I'm a vegetarian and slash pescatarian. Okay. So I, I, I'm actually like resetting my cooking skills. 
because I know how to cook all of the other type of food, soul uh-huh. food, Italian food, Spanish food, Jamaican food, but I don't cook none of that no more. So I cook it for my kids, but I've been trying to like learn new recipes for the the, the, the vegetarian stuff, but I, I'm getting a grasp of it. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, this whole vegan thing, I mean, you know, I know you watch basketball. We was talking about that earlier, but Kyrie Irvin, are you, do you know he's a, he he went clean too. Mm-hmm. I think he's a vegan right now. Did you know that? I, I I've heard it, but I didn't like do too much investigating on. Yeah, he accredits a lot of his success this year because it was it happened in the early part of the year. But mm-hmm. uh, John Sally, you're familiar with you know you remember John Sally? He's Sorry. pushing a lot of these athletes to go vegan. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, if you need, like, if you're looking for some inspiration on those new recipes as you're adjusting, mm-hmm. uh, I would check out John Sally. He's very well versed in this industry. Okay, yeah, I, I will do that because I'm definitely, um, like, learning new recipes and stuff like that. Like, I just made some vegetarian lasagna, but they have, like, it's it's coming along. Like, they have this, this thing called, like, Beyond Meat. Uh-huh, and- yeah tastes just like ground uh, beef and all that. So I've been I've been using that and I've been eating Beyond Burgers and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a trial and error. You learn and then you, you take what's good and you throw out what's bad. Uh, all right, just being honest, does your wife like the food that you like? Does she like the vegan lifestyle? Yeah, she likes it. Yeah. She, we started together. So we, we, we actually have... Um, we, we've been going to a lot of vegan restaurants and stuff like that. Good vegan food. Yeah, we actually went to an Indian, because we out here in Atlanta, so we went to an Indian v- vegetarian restaurant. We went to a couple soul food spot ones. In New York, it's, it, it's more variety than here, but they have some Chinese. They have some Chinese ones, too. Oh, They're yeah. Decent. Yeah, so we've been eating out more with it because we've been trying to learn the recipes, but now we're starting to cook more at home you ever you tried a general sal's uh tofu yet no i don't really like tofu uh, really yeah i don't really like tofu you don't like tofu Mm-mm. bean curd I, I i don't i don't like beans i've never ate beans in my life neither <laughs> what Mm-mm. i hate beans wow <laughs> yeah Okay, so I wonder. Uh, read this to you as you're on your um, on your health stuff right now, right? And it's called the Dirty Dozen Plus, and there's also a Clean Fifteen. And what it basically says, uh, it's been studies and research shown that this was enlightening to me. So I just want to pass it. I just learned this about two weeks ago. So it basically is saying if you don't buy these things with the organic label on it. It is very, very, very unhealthy. And if you do, and so they, they have 15, well, they have 18 now. It used to be 50, it used to be 12, then it jumped to 18. So there's 18 things that are listed that you must buy organic. And here they go. Strawberries, spinach, nectarines, apples, peaches, pears, cherries, grapes, celery, tomatoes, sweet bell peppers, potatoes, cucumbers, cherry tomatoes, lettuce, imported snap peas, domestic blueberries, and hot peppers. If you don't buy those things organic, you're really doing yourself a disservice. Now, here's the other ones, where whether if it's organic or not, you, it's a thumbs up. And it's called the Clean 15. Number one is sweet corn, two avocados, three pineapples, cabbage, onions, sweet peas, papaya, asparagus, mangoes, eggplant, honeydew melon, kiwi, cantaloupe, cauliflower, and grapefruit. Are any of those surprising to you? Uh, I would say the, the, not the clean ones. Okay. The other ones, I, I, I would have thought some of those things you could eat that, that didn't have to be organic. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. I, 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 go ahead. Interesting. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. 
Are any of your friends and you guys circle of friends and